Hello, hello, for the final time of Swiss of Xenarchand 3, The Grand Summoning. This is Steve D on commentary, and I'm following the progress of Really Not Chris, aka Chris, of the YYT. He is, as we commonly say in Scotland, on the bubble. Right now he's 4-2. Actually, everyone in the squad who's participating in the event is 4-2 or 5-1. So I think that uh, our 5-1 comrades are pretty much safe for top cut. 4-2, yeah, on the bubble we call it. So we're against Slaxbon here, if I'm not very much mistaken, one of the f uh, forefront of the French FFTCG community. And it looks like we're playing against some Earth Lightning control, you know, Earth, Earth Lightning stuff, yeah. Chris is on Twins, Night Twins, and has been really enjoying the deck. It's a low backup count, a lot of forwards, a lot of cool stuff. You slam some Ramses. It's been uh, going pretty well. We, we followed Chris to a loss previously. Hopefully I'm not a curse. Hopefully the stress of being on camera is not the, the defining factor in how Chris is doing. So Chris has lost this particular toss, I guess you'd say. So we're going for discard Agrius, discard Gawain, turn one, for a Sarah. Okay, I, I was wondering if that would be Sildra, perhaps Sildra to get Sarah and something else, but Sarah to find us our pseudo fire CP in the form of Princess Sarah is no bad thing. Interesting as well that uh, Slaxbon played the Delusory Warlock on turn one, but elected not to play the, I forget what it's called, I'm so used to calling them Delboy, you know, Delusory, Delboy, and Rodney. So I didn't play Rodney this turn, so that suggests to me there's no Vanille on the next turn. Chris actually discarded a Beatrix to play the Princess Sarah this turn, which again, tips hand a little bit, suggests that we've got a two-cost play that's uh, itching, itching to be on the field this coming turn. What is the way to beat Earth Lightning? I think if the game goes on long enough, Man in Black just does everything. Man in Black does everything in a long game, and potentially there's infinite value if there's a Black Mage variant as well. So I think there is a little bit of pressure here to be the one doing the board wipes. But in Earth Lightning, a lot of the board wipes uh, are... You know, my point is, if Earth Lightning board wipes and the game is prolonged, then they'll win by default because their late game is so strong. But uh, yeah, if, if Waterfire can duck under the board wipes and protect board state with Amaterasu and the new Aqua Terasu Leviathan, we could be uh, we could be in with uh, another YYT 5-2 and well, maybe a lot of YYT 5-2s. I believe we've avoided the, the curse of pairing against our own kind in this particular Swiss. So uh, Hecaton Care Backup Breaker is discarded for Arciella. Very strong card. Strong against Fire in particular. Not so sure about Knight's variant. Uh, I don't recall if Garland is in this specifically, but we've got Palum and oh, Porum can turn off Arciella from being uh, more damaging than she already is. And then there's things like Ramza that could just clean break her. I don't know if Arciella on her own is devastating. I'm, I'm far away from calling her a one Opus Wonder, but I definitely think a lot of little things happened for Arciella in Opus 18 that are less than good. A lot of clean break, a lot of people playing Lady Liliths and Melusines, steal Arciella and make her use all her counters, stuff like that. Stuff like that. So Chris chucks away a uh, Sildra for a Sildra. We're trying to ramp up here. That's interesting as well that down comes an Arciella and still no extra earth backup. I would have thought that Earth Lightning's role here was to set up and outlast. Maybe I'm misunderstanding the decklist. Maybe I'm seeing Earth Lightning and assuming it's all played the same way. Maybe this is a lot more of a tempo-oriented list, and so having the early RCL just beats fire cards. Maybe Jeremy doesn't realise how... Uh, Jeremy? Is it Jeremy? I hope it's Jeremy. <laughs> Slack spawn. Uh, and maybe uh, doesn't realise how few fire cards and how little burn there is in this list outside of the Palom on the bottom. So we set up an Ovelia, very nice for subsequent Agrius. Makes Arciella have to use a counter just to stay alive. And we've got our own Arciella here, the, the, the superior waifu Arciella with her uh, wonderful dress and, you know, nice slab of cake. It's a nice looking tea, actually. Wow. I would eat that. Okay, so Slaxbon is munching Sildra here on the attack. And what do we do after that? You know, the six cards in hand. Presumably we play a backup here. Uh, I would be very surprised if the... What's it called? The Lady of Antiquity. That's it. That's Rodney. If, if uh, Lady, An Lady of Antiquity probably should come down here. Discarding a Black Waltz 3. So this is uh, a Black Waltzes and Black Mages variant. We're playing the Ninja. But what's going on with the Earth CP? Where's the Earth CP at? Other than in hand. So Chris is a little bit beaten up here. It's going to be tricky not impossible i wouldn't even go as far as to say hard but it's going to be tricky to navigate around this rcl given that she effectively turns off combat you know combat step and blocking and stuff 
you're allowed to block but your opponent isn't you can attack into anything but your opponent can't a little bit one-sided so ovelia and ferion are playing a leonora nice that suggests to me two twins are coming down one crystal on slackspawn side of the field and two backups this is prime robel territory i think it's entirely possible that if chris goes two twins here and it sure looks like two twins yep there's a palom and there's a porom I mean, there's a porum, discarding a soldier for it. All the soldier have shown up at once. They're like buses in the Glasgow area. Two counters apiece. I think that Robel would be quite scary here because it, it means that the discarded copy of Lady of Antiquity or whatever is now just extra CP every turn. But I don't think there is a way to kill both of the twins easily this turn. I, I think that to, one of them is going to live and one of them is going to make Arciella's job very difficult. We'll see. I hope we'll see. Chris has uh, not been through many of his signature Amaterasus. As a player, he's uh, known in the, the local area, known at our locals for always having the Amaterasu. Usually two copies. It was a really funny game where I was playing a primitive version of Earth Lightning against him, and I, I played a VV that he Amaterasu'd, and I was like, ha, that was just bait. My real thing I wanted to do is Shadow Lord away all your samurais. And I had another Amaterasu for that as well. So, Yeah. It's uh, far from a solo occurrence. We'll see. Got to root for the home team, you know. No offence to our dear Slackspawn. The tricky thing here is that Porom can turn off Arciella from doing anything more. Porom can obligate Arciella to use your counters now or not for the rest of the turn, while also saying you don't gain more counters next turn. And that's, uh, that's a lot, you know, that's a, a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure to use your resources correctly, and who knows if you will. And then from the next turn, we can start to obligate Arciella to use your crystal, or use all your tokens on yourself, or you will die. So yeah, we go straight to the combat phase. Arciella wanted to get more crystals, but was told no. I would love that card in full art. Come on, monthly promo. And and maybe maybe give us the monthly promo. So Arciella is attacking, 7k. Uh, Agrius into damage, wow, sweet little card draw. That's bound to be an Amaterasu, if I know Chris. <laughs> But yeah, like, unless the next card to appear is a Robel, I really feel like Chris is very far ahead because Palom and Porom are scary. There's the potential for there uh, to be a board wipe. You know, Titan Lord of Crags or something would be strong. Although it would kill Arciella because Arciella was turned off by Porom. It's not just triggered abilities or not just autos when you attack. It won't be able to pump stuff in response to Titan. So Even Shadow Lord here, Shadow Lord declaring Apprentice Mage. Can't say I would see that an awful lot, but this game... Could be really smart. All right, Slackspawn, how do you best use six cards in hand? Staring down two twins. I think two twins and four backups. Like, even if Slackspawn gets rid of the twins and does a board wipe or something, that would probably cost a great deal of hand. And, you know, the staring down four backups. So Chris is going to resolve the twins. It would appear that there are no Robels here. I can only imagine they're in the deck. We've seen Black Mages, we've seen Crystals. Robel's got to be there. He's just never in hand when you want him. So, an attack on Porum. Little cheeky VVEX, maybe? No? Not attacking? Not attacking yet? I don't know. Maybe there's a Ferion in hand or something you'd like to play. Okay, pre-combat. Discarding an X-Death. Dulling Ninja for Ramu. Shoot one of your twins and dull the other one. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Kill the twins while you can. Uh, I think that if there was, like, the Leviathan summon that makes you take less damage, this would be a really good time for it. But you never know these things in advance. It's hard to tell if it's going to be important or not. Palom died. Porom lived. I think that's a good call, actually, because there's not a lot of ping damage here to make Porom translate into kills. Whereas Palom, an 8k flamethrower, is going to make pretty short work of all of the Black Mages. I think even a, a Black Waltz here would be very strong just to get rid of the twins off the field. But, again, maybe you spend too many resources... And uh, it's all gone. Oh, okay. Uh, Waka gets a, a dead Ovelia. Interesting. Okay, and some fiery misses that go to the bottom of the deck. I like the Waka. Uh, I'm still, jury's still out on whether it, it stands the test of time, but I think the, the EX reads well. Card reads very well. Okay, oh, cheeky, cheeky phoenix. That's going to get back a palom. Oh, beautiful. And there was me saying, oh, don't bother playing the phoenix. You only play 11 backups in the deck or something. 
So, <laughs> so yeah, the the palom is is quite terrifying there. I wonder if it was possible to have Porom blank the Arciella. No, we couldn't have blank and shrunk the Arciella there, could we? No, we, we, we could only blank it, so the, we're not going to be able to kill it that turn. I'm forgetting how many counters the Porom had the previous turn. Okay, so after expending a Ramu killing Palom, like, uh, or, or killing twins in general, barely matters which, this is going to be scary. We're going to have to start using counters. I'm using we as the perspective of the turn player here. Uh, I think the counters are going to have to be removed proactively in response to Porom to stop Palom just killing it. But that's not great, you know. It's not a particularly good use of counters when you're not manipulating multiple things at the same time, when you're not allowing multiple things to deal damage that they otherwise couldn't have. Furthermore, I don't think it's particularly good feeling to drop a Shantotto back up or a board wipe that's going to affect Arciella when we've got two counters on Arciella. That's a lot of ground to lose. I'm going to keep a little remove from game count here. There's uh, one summon in both players removed from game piles. Okay, Dull Ninja, Dull Lady, Dull Delusory, Dill Boy and Rodney. I'm going to see if this name can catch on. Discarding a Cactuar. Yeah, man in black. Man in black. Get back that Ramu. Ramu's going to do things. Unspeakable things to Palom. Oh, no, Cactuar. Okay, that's... Yeah, that's cleaner. You know, that, that, that can kill either twin regardless of their size, regardless of their marital status. Cactuar does not discriminate. So in response to man in black targeting the Cactuar, Porom is going to blank the Arciella. I guess it's just a use them now or forever hold your peace sort of a situation because... Uh, we have Porom live with Shrinkage. This might be the only summon that Mana Black ever gets to recur, so it better matter. I think that the Cactuar is probably better off from Earth Lightning's perspective killing the Porom just so that Mana Black continues to have text. We'll see. Really interesting deck, and one that I wasn't really sure if it would stand the test of time or how it would stand the test of time into Opus 18. There's obviously lots of really powerful Earth Lightning cards. Vanille's really cool. Billy Bob is, there's not a bad word on him. But where does it all fit in, you know? And uh, so far I've not seen an awful lot of new stuff in this list. Maybe it's just a sort of an Opus 17 list that's uh, that's being piloted uh, into a, a modern storm. We'll see. Reading Waka there to see if he had an action ability as well. Nope, he just looks for cards. He's a good boy. So in response to the Porom, one counter is removed from Arciella just so that Palom can't cleanly kill with the, the little 2k range. I think that's fair. More than fair. When all of this build-up is used up not to prevent removal, we're just prolonging the inevitable. I think that's exactly what Twins wants to do. Very good cards at smoking out or uh, evoking some kind of reaction. Very visceral, gut-jerking cards. I couldn't have said that a less poetic way if I wanted to. Okay, what are we thinking about here? Oh, Gerati has joined the game. Hello. Hello to our extra witness. I think that the, the final rounds, and particularly the on-the-bubble rounds, are of great interest. Everyone likes to see how they go. Everyone's got a favourite to support. course I'm trying to support all the YYT guys. A lot of four twos and five ones going into this round. Let's see. Any scary matchups I'm aware of. Oh, we've got a little bit of uh, killing ourselves on table 12. Table 12, two of our four twos are, are playing each other. We've got some Ice Lightning playing against Turbo Ice. Saw both of those decks in respective games earlier on. I can only wish them both the best of luck in a very fair game. And I hope that both of them get turned one Teodor. So they both know how miserable that is. Trying to pad out the time here. What's going on here with the cactuars and the such? Is my laptop secretly frozen and I'm just not aware? So we're removing the, the counter from Arciella. Just to stay alive, I imagine, but I don't see why we would buff Man in Black here. OK, 
Come on, any time at all. That's been a couple of minutes. All right, uh, and one more counter is removed from Arciella, so I think that we're uh, we're making really, really sure that stuff stays alive here. Arciella attacks. Arciella does not have an attack trigger. Palom hits damage. That's a shame because it means that the Paloms are a little bit of a more precious resource, but maybe this one's going to live forever. Draw some cards. Now, if we'd like, we can just kill Man in Black, and I think that's a very big deal. Put on, reduce, well, remove Man in Black's abilities, and uh, Palom shoot him. Yep, shrink him to one. Classic combo, you know. Sometimes you just play these on turn one and you win the game. Your opponent can't interact. Devastating against aggro. What's aggro going to do? Sometimes beats control and combo as well. I, I, I have won games because I've just turboed the twins out turn one, and that's it. You know, opponent screwed. Sad boy moments. Now is the time to... Uh, to uh, to I was going to say to Amaterasu. I'm getting ahead of myself there. Now is the time to Shantoto, now that we are very obviously behind on board. Or, or uh, Earth Lightning is very obviously behind on board. So, yeah, Gawain. Basically, trade 4 CP on board for 4 CP in hand. I like that, if there's not anything better to do. Maybe it's a little bit of uh, tipping one's hand that the fire CP is dulled. That suggests to me that there's no Amaterasu, or we're not trying to hold open an Amaterasu. Certainly a Mist Dragon was removed for the very early Arciella, so... Mm, I think that an Amaterasu would kind of solve this if there's a board wipe. I just don't see what we, what Earth Lightning can do here to, to get back from such scary twins. We've got a big 10k here, we've got an 8k here. Both of them are in their abilities are doing absolutely everything range. There's only one Cactuar, the Man in Black died. I very much doubt there's the CP to play more. So, uh, our comrade Slaxbon just skips straight ahead into second main, and uh, Arciella is going to target Porom. I think Arciella would be smart to target Porom most of the time. <laughs> All right, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, we, 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 just, uh, we just shoot it there. Wonderful. Drop the thought. Come on, Chris. Show us what you're made of. Show us the Amaterasu. Nope, he showed us a nice remove from game. I think maybe the Gawain was just to set up a hand for a better rebuild, but no, okay. Uh, the, the Shantoto came down. Might as well attack with the Arciella, right? See what happens. Okay, Chris, what's the rebuild looking like? Lots more cards in hand because of Gawain just literally being Pot of Greed. I'm surprised at the warp on Ramza. I, I, part of me thinks, just hard cast the Ramza here. And maybe it does more, you know, two forwards now rather than two forwards later. Unless there's like another board wipe to play around here, unless we're trying to play around a uh, Shadow Lord because there's not an Amaterasu yet and this gives us time to draw one. I'm not sure. I, I think it's easy to forget sometimes that the warp cards can be hard cast and vice versa. Had a really interesting mono wind game today where I hard cast a Charlotta, bounced it back with Bismarck and then warped it again on the next turn. And it's like, wow, this this is it's just incredible flexibility. And I would like if the warp cards were a little bit more aggressively costed so that you could viably dual mode them. I would like if uh, Yum Cax, the, the one and only wife of FFTCG, I would like if Yum Cax cost three or something, you know, or and, and had a warp one of one CP. It's, it just reminds me a little bit of Skarmiglione back from Opus 2, when uh, we had this card with a nebulous keyword of back attack on it. And it was the only card with back attack for about two years, and everyone forgot about it. And any time it popped up, it was a rules nightmare at uh, situations. Maybe they, they just thought the back attack was more powerful than it turned out to be. I don't know. Okay, so we've got Matoya here. Matoya comes down. Matoya's recurring a cheeky little X-Death. There's ten cards, some of which are summons in Chris's break zone. There is nine cards, some of which are presumably summons in Slaxbond's break zone. So X-Death is getting kind of close to being Mr. Doom. All right, Chris, you, you, you paid five CP for a warp last turn. Do something cool here. I want to see something cool. A warp counter has been removed from Ramza. Two turns feels like an age in a really competitive game. That's the problem, you know? A card down and two CP down and two turns down. Those knights better be worth it. It's entirely possible that X-Death will come down here just to snipe the break zone so that Ramza has no text. That would be interesting to see. What in the good name? Okay, there's uh, Susano just being played for haste. I don't think we'll sack her back up here. I would love to see what's in Chris's hand that's so devoid. Maybe it's all Amaterasu's, but if it was all Amaterasu's, then I think we would have stopped the Shantoto. All right. Susano, Susano, time to go poking. Let's go remove uh, a Del Boy and a Rodney. There we go, together forever. Apologies to anyone in America or mainland Europe who doesn't know who Del Boy and Rodney are. In the UK, they are uh, 
your granddad's favourite sitcom characters. And that's all I'll say. Back over to Slackspawn. Chris, with his soldiers and his searches and his whackers and all this kind of stuff, is uh, quite a few cards ahead in the deck out race. I think that if X Death comes down here and it's only 2 ZP, it would be really smart to amateurasu it to keep our break zone to keep Ramsad doing something. But with five backups open, if there's another Mist Dragon, and there's never only one Mist Dragon in Earth Lightning, even Amaterasu is not absolute. I think even uh, Leviathan here would be acceptable, but I believe I saw Leviathan discarded earlier on, and I don't think Chris is running multiple. A lot of the time it's just worse than Amaterasu, you've got to admit. It doesn't counter as many things, doesn't kill the thing it's coming from, you never really want to bounce a lot of the time. It's just, just a bit of work, you know. So we discard a Geomancer, and a Shantoto, and Matoya's dulled. Who's this? That's a Shinryu. Okay. I didn't see that coming in this deck of all decks. But it does fit the Earth Lightning goal of being a sit-back-and-do-nothing sort of deck. A very passive deck. Okay, we're amateur uh, amateur assuming, that's hard to say, the Shinryu. That does mean that the X-Death is now going to get away with it scot-free, and Rams is going to have no text. I kind of feel like I'd just let the Susano die, and the Shinryu can be bait for the X-Death, because the X-Death removing the brakes on here, and Ramza having no text, that's hard. Unless this is just a fabled Chris double Amaterasu turn. Here's the X-Death. Where's those cards at? What's going to happen? I think if there was an Amaterasu, we would have seen... Oh, no, he's discarded for the... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Slagspawn. Yeah. I've just, I've just been on the receiving end of this too many times. That it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful to, to witness it happen. It's like watching salmon leaping upstream or, you know, the Virgin Mary giving birth. Oh, my word. So... If we draw Gawain here, Ramza's going to enter. Oh, Ramza can get us Gawain, who can get us some knights, who can kill the Shinryu. So that sounds insane. I hope Chris sees that line of play. I'm sure he will. He's a good boy. He's a good He's a good player. That Gawain is removed from game, though. That's a good point. That, uh, that removed to Shantoto. So uh, what else is there in the break zone? Once again, I'm hoping we drew two knights or drew the Gawain. Yeah, okay. Get a Gawain on the field. No meaningful interaction here. I just don't think there is a summon that costs two CP. You know, Slackspawn is tapped out. There's... Uh, there's nothing in hand that can stop this here, so just get all the cheap knights we can. Where's a Beatrix on an Agrius? Okay, yeah, Agrius will do. The aim here is just to play them and kill the Shinryu so that it doesn't do value over time things. And then attack with the Susano, damage 5. Even a Shadow Lord isn't, like, totally out of the woods because the Susano's going to live. Let's see how this one pans out. I think that Agrius could come down, shrink the Shinryu, attack on the Susano. No, I, I think that killing pre-combat actually matters more here just because dealing damage matters. Damage is good. Damage is your friend. Steiner buffs things. We've got a big Gawain. We've got a big Susano. Not just the knights, it's all the forwards you control. Cool little combat trick. Chris likes his combat tricks. Uh, yeah, I know he was a, a fan. He's playing uh, FFTCG longer than anyone else in the YYT. Me and him go back a, a long, long way. And uh, I think he played from Opus 1. I played from Opus 2. It's a question I get a lot of the time. But he loves these uh, these Phoenix combat tricks. Loves to Phoenix in a, an Opus 3 Cryle and stuff like that back in the day. There we go. Lots and lots of knights. Lovely big Agrius. A nice uh, Power 10,000 label there just to, to flex. Power 12,000. Hmm. Okay, we're dulling, we're killing the Shinryu. It all goes down like I suggested it might. Man in black in damage, that's very, very important. And then Susano, gotta just slap here, right? You know? Damage 5, make it a little bit easier to, to wind up the game. Black Waltz is really not doing anything here. We can kill, wow, we can kill Steiner. We can perforate the, the Queen's Knights. King's Knights? I don't know. It's a long time since I played FF9. I liked it though. It was uh, it was interesting. I liked the sort of very uh, European, much less Japanese in its character design and level design and music. I felt even. Okay, four cards for Slackspawn, two for an Aerith. Hmm, nice, yeah, nice card. 
I, I think it's a, it needs to bolster something here, though. It's not enough on its own. And a Titan Lord of Crags. We're just trying to kill everything, including the Aerith here. 11,000. That's that's big. That's that's actually perfect. Yeah, that's, that's really, really good play. Yep, Aerith dies as well. But I think that paying like 11 CP there for a Titan Lord of Crags, just because you know it's going to do the job. There can't be another Amaterasu. There physically can't be the CP for another Amaterasu there. That's Earth Lightning for you, though. You just uh, you just drain everyone's will. Okay, Chris is playing with a with a, a fair amount of decision here. Again, I'm a little bit surprised at the the warp on Ramza. I feel like I would just be whirlwinding this down because there's bound to be another X Death just around the corner, and that's scary, scary to me. Or a mist dragon, I suppose. I think I'd want to just eke every little bit of value and get a 10k onto the field to block the 9k. There's probably logic behind it, and there's probably cards that simply couldn't afford to be discarded. Maybe uh, another amateur asu for X death or something. That'd be funny, you know? It'd be memorable. Definitely in the territory of may the best man win. All right, Black Walls is coming down here. Just a nice little recursive guy. I don't think it's going to kill anything meaningful. I will be fascinated to see if the Ramza Warp pays off, or if the Ramza Warp was optimal. It's going to be fun. Again, nice and fast, very decisive with these plays here. We are playing a little bit against the clock. Okay, there's a Porom. Uh, Porom might just die to a hand trap discard. There's one card in Slaxbond's hand. Uh, Porom is going to turn off that ability to try and smoke out a card just now. See what happens, I suppose. So Chris looks to be dead on board unless something interesting happens. Uh, we're discarding our Robel Akbel. Yep, there goes the Porum. Now Chris, once again, is dead on board, needs to play something exciting. I really wonder if warping the Ramza was too slow. Five. Seven. <laughs> okay, hard cast the Ramza because we really, really need help right now. <laughs> yeah, okay. That that sucks though because now Chris is down 4 CP. Two that we paid for the Ramza, two for the Ramza themselves. Here comes an Agrius. Agrius, I think getting Black Waltz off the field matters, but getting a Robel back in hand sucks. There's there's lots and lots of ways here. That, that, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, casting Cactuar and playing the Robel is enough to just clean up what's on the field and then Titan swings for... Oh, not quite game, not quite game. Yeah, uh, I was thinking damage six there, but no, five apiece. It's been exciting. You can't deny it's been a real back and forth game and uh, it doesn't feel particularly bricky on the part of anyone. Not seen a lot of Opus 17 cards here. Not seen any Billy Bobs and whatnot. I think we're still quite early and quite unproven in the Opus 18 format that sometimes people just don't want to take risks for a big event like this and try and innovate something new and huge. Let's see what happens. So Slagspawn has two cards in hand. That is a pretty small decision tree. But, uh, yeah. So the, the Black Waltz died, but there was no recursion. Nothing has recurred yet. And I can't target cards in Breakson to try and remind them. I can target things on the field, but I think that's more of a vulnerability in Octagon than anything else. Okay, I wonder what's going on there. Okay, just pass it to Chris. I feel like having uh, the Robel back in hand would really, really matter. I, I dearly hope that's not just a forgotten thing. Is it, a, is it an optional trigger? You may return up to, and he's forgotten, and so there's, there's grounds to say... No, you can't have them now. I'm trying to scroll up here in the chat log. Black Waltz 3, Black Waltz 3. Um, choose up to two Black Mage. So there are grounds that he chose zero. You know, I'm going to have to rule a final round of a big tournament with scrutiny. I should note I'm not involved or affiliated with this tournament in any way. I'm just a, a merry bystander who's recording my beloved friends. Okay, big old Bahamut does 15,000 to Titan, Lord of Crags. Lord of Ashes now. All right. And Ramza and Agrius. What now? Attack, right? Surely. The Cactuar can stop one of them. The, the Cactuar should stop one of them, right? 
Okay, so we had a Kitone. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice uh, nice fashion sense. So there was an RCL in hand. RCL is not going to do tons against this deck because it's all 8Ks and 9Ks and not a lot of supplementary damage. And then there was another Porom with that smug downward point. Yeah, a very, very interesting game. I'm, I'm surprised at the, the Black Waltz thing. Maybe I... Maybe I'm not understanding something here, but I'm pretty sure our next death never resolved. Why Why not take back a Robel? Hmm. That's one for the YouTube comments. So uh, we'll pick up down there. And uh, yeah, congratulations to Chris. 5-2. I think he's uh, still going to be on the bubble, but he won his bubble game. And I'm really, really hoping that 5-2 is enough to make it there. And I know for a fact that we'll have a couple of other 5-2s in the YYT. Having a 5-1 going into this round and a couple of 4-2s playing against each other, the odds are uh, the odds are in your favour of having three 5-2s. And we'll catch up with how Michael's doing as well. Stick around. I'll cover the top cut games for as long as our boys stick around in the event. Please uh, stay tuned to the playlist. Hope you're having a good time so far. Bye-bye.